With the single possible exception of Devil Fruit, swords are easily the single most awesome and powerful things in all of One Piece. So we're going to rank the 13 strongest swords ever in the story. Starting with Trafalgar Law's Lethal Blade Kikoku. And while you might not expect the sword to be ranked very high, especially with that fluffy cross guard, it is actually one of the swords that dealt the most damage in the entire story. And that's because this extraordinary blade has served Law in intense battles against strong fighters like Warlords and Empress of the sea. Plus, Law also uses Kikoku in his strongest attacks like this one here, which even broke through an entire island. And we also know that this sword is cursed, which means that it was made by an incredibly skilled craftsman and that it is nearly impossible for any weak swordsman to use it because they cannot control the will of the blade. But Law's surgical blade of death is certainly not the only cursed blade that we will be seeing in this ranking. And so moving on from the surgeon's blade, let's discuss a sword owned by someone who literally has has died because at number 12 we have this skeleton's cane sword and Brooke has actually named this dapper blade soul solid mostly because he is able to combine his icy cold soul powers to make this sword a devastating weapon in combat and just like the previous sword soul solid has clashed with emperors like big mom and it has never let Brooke down in over 50 years of graceful swordsmanship also one more very important thing to mention about soul solid is that it has actually a personality of its own now, this is common with many of the strongest swords, and the author has even drawn Brook's sword as a wrinkly old man. But this sword is not even close to the insanely powerful and famous blades later on in this video. However, first, next in the ranking is one of the largest swords ever used in the entire story. No, not this one, or even this one. Damn, I wish someone actually used this sword. But no, for now, we have this enormous blade right here, because this is Fung Freed, and it is the only sword confirmed in the entire story that has actually eaten a devil fruit. And because of this rare ability, it can actually transform from its base sword form to a hybrid snake-like blade and a full-blown elephant form, which is an absolutely insane power that is completely wasted by the most pitiful character in the entire story so far. Because all I'm saying is that if this sword was instead used by an actual strong character, it could easily be one of the best swords in the entire story because of its sheer versatility. Because you basically never have to worry about losing your sword because it could just transform and walk next to you, which would also be really nice to see kind of show the connection between the swordsman and his sword. And so while this magnificent elephant sword made a tremendous first impression, the next sword on his list has been a super important part of the story for nearly 1,000 chapters. Enter the Sandai Kitetsu, which of course is owned by our old favorite Roronoa Zoro. Now he discovered this blade in chapter 97 at a sword shop in Loketown. And initially the shop owner actually refused to allow anyone to take it or even touch it because its previous owners had all died. However, of course, Zoro was determined to prove himself and challenged the blade itself. And yes, this is of course yet another cursed blade in our ranking, but even after earning the sword fair and square, Zoro initially struggles hard to control the Sendai Kitetsu's bloodlust. And this actually goes to show us that a swordsman using a cursed blade must give extra focus to the blade itself to prevent it from cutting things that they don't intend, including themselves. But that's not all about this impressive sword, because in One Piece, many swords are actually ranked based on their exceptional feats, remarkable craftsmanship, and also just sheer power. And so the Sandai Kitetsu here is a simply graded blade, which is the lowest of the swords that are actually ranked. Though we still have to be honest and say that these swords are still way stronger than any average sword in the story. However, then above these like standard great blades are 50 skillful great blades, 21 great great blades, and finally the 12 supreme great blades, which of course we will get to as well. Now you may already know about the other two Kitetsu blades. There's the first, second, and third one, and supposedly the Sandai, which means three, is the weakest of the three. However, I'm going to exclude the Nidai Kitetsu from this ranking since we have only briefly glimpsed it in Wano. Plus, I actually believe that due to Zoro's countless intense battles with the Sendai, it may as well have already surpassed the Nidai Kitetsu in terms of strength, which, yes, is a real thing. Because swords can actually get stronger in One Piece based on their wielder's hockey, which we will be discussing more with some of the top drank swords later on in this video. But wait, we're starting to go down a pretty deep rabbit hole here, and if we want to do so, we should go prepared, which is why I want to thank today's sponsor, Vessi. To sum it up in a nutshell, Vessi makes the perfect urban 
Hydrant Shoe. They're comfy, 100% waterproof, which is great because I can wear them on the beach and during rainy season in Japan, and I've been very impressed actually how durable these are. I actually usually go through shoes quite quickly because I love walking, running around in them, and doing stuff like playing football in the street, probably too much. But my first pair of Vessies have lasted over two years actually of pretty much daily abuse on my end, so it was super nice to see that they actually decided to sponsor me because I was about to get a new pair of these anyways. And even if those get dirty, you can just chuck them in the washing machine and they come out looking like new. And best of all, Vessi looks amazing. They come in a variety of styles, though I did really vibe with these white ones that will be just perfect for Tokyo summer. And right now I've partnered up with Vessi for Memorial Day to get you up to 30% on a bunch of different shoe styles using my link vessi.com slash ohara. And even if you happen to watch this video a little bit later, you still get a very solid 15% discount on your order using the code ohara at checkout, link in the description below. And now back to the video, walking down that rabbit hole. And while Sandai's curse makes it a blade to be feared, no sword on this ranking has more personality than Big Mom's Napoleon. Now, this massive hat slash sword has been combined with a piece of Big Mom's own soul to make it a living, breathing creature. It can grow to a truly massive size and has clashed with countless strong opponents, including Kaido, meaning that it has to be an insanely strong and sturdy sword. But even Napoleon hasn't achieved something as impressive as this next blade here, which managed to leave a scar on Kaido himself. Because this is Zoro's famous Wado Ichimonji, one of the three swords that he used to leave a bloody wound on Kaido during their rooftop battle. And this sword is the closest to Zoro's heart, since it is also a representation of his promise with his childhood friend Kuina to become the world's strongest swordsman. However, next to its emotional significance to Zoro, the Wado Ichimonji is actually also one of the only 21 great great swords, making it one of the strongest blades ever. Now, many already believe that this is Zoro's most important sword because he's been having it since he was a child. And personally, I think he will make it even stronger and it will eventually become one of the highest ranking swords in the story. And yet all of that still doesn't make it stronger than the next blade in this ranking because it has been around for hundreds of years and was used by the literal sword god himself. And that is none other than Shusui, which belonged to the legendary Samurai Ryuma. Now, Zoro earned this blade after defeating the zombie version of Ryuma, and even Zoro immediately noticed that this blade was heavy and incredibly powerful. This sword is another of the 21 great great swords, but on top of it, it is a legendary black blade. What is a black blade, you ask? Well, that's an Excellent question. You see, there are actually only two of these black blades confirmed in the entire story so far, and while we don't know exactly how the process works to make one, we're being told that swords can become black blades after countless battles alongside their master. In other words, undoubtedly, this involves incredible high levels of hockey being infused into the blade. Now, sadly enough, Zoro actually couldn't keep Shusui forever because in chapter 954, he was begged to return it to Wano country because it is considered a national treasure. But Zoro of course wouldn't give it up for free and only agree to this in exchange for another even stronger blade that we'll of course be discussing a little bit later in this ranking. And now just barely not making the cut of the top 5, we have the infamous cursed sword, the Shodai Kitetsu. Now, this sword is supposed to be the strongest of the Kitetsu lines and is the very first blade in this video which owns the supreme great sword rank. And while we've never officially seen this blade in the story so far, a common theory is that it is actually being owned by this guy right here because it has an incredibly similar hilt wrapping and cross guard to the other two Kitetsu blades. And so clearly just based on reputation, its ranking and its likely owner, this is going to be an extremely powerful sword that I cannot wait to actually see in action, which means that you should definitely, absolutely, undoubtedly subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos discussing secrets of the One Piece world like when this sword is finally revealed. Which now already brings us into the top five where we have a blade that you may confuse for another famous character, and that is Ace, because this is Ace, but this is also Ace, which honestly would get a little bit confusing around the house if they were still alive, so 
parenting tip number one, so you still learn something in this video, probably don't name your child after your favorite weapon. But for a long time, we wondered about the famous sword of the former pirate king Goldie Roger. Many fans believe that Roger actually gave his sword to Shanks, but it does turn out that this is a completely different sword. On top of that, we also recently learned that it is one of the 12 supreme great blades in a visual book written by the author Oda. And honestly, that makes a lot of sense because this badass cutlass is Roger's primary weapon that he used to fight the strongest characters in the entire story. However, it is a little bit unclear if this sword is a black blade or not, since it is never mentioned and it's kind of hard to tell from the manga or anime, like could just be hockey. But I wouldn't be surprised honestly if it was because of the many titanic battles that Roger must have fought during his life with this. And who did Roger fight in many of these epic clashes? Well, that would be the former world's strongest man, Whitebeard, with his world famous Naginata, Murakumugiri. And while this is the only technically non sword in this ranking, it is undeniably one of the strongest blades ever forged. Of course, this is also a supreme great blade, just like his rival sword. And Whitebeard masterfully used Murakumugiri in combination with his tremor fruit to produce attacks capable of destroying entire islands. But with this, we're moving from the strongest blades of the previous generation into the top three, which are all still being used in the story today. And how do you think this top three will turn out in the end? Well, we're gonna kick it off with Griffin, the faithful blade of the one-armed swordsman, Shanks. And even today, there's a lot of mystery surrounding this sword as there is around this character, but there is some surprising information that was recently revealed about it. Like, did you know that Shanks can actually coat this sword with a fiery aura? I'm not sure if that means hockey or some other elemental powers, but... Damn, cannot wait to see that. And you also may not have realized that Shanks did not actually start the story with this sword. Because in chapter one, Shanks actually uses a sword with this handguard, which is quite distinctly different from Griffin. Now, this could mean that Oda just didn't have the final design in mind during chapter one, or maybe Shanks just obtained Griffin later on in the later years between chapter one and when we actually first see him using it in chapter 200. Now, we actually don't know the official in-world ranking for Griffin, but it would not surprise me, like, at all to learn that this would also be a supreme great sword, considering that Shanks uses it basically any time that he makes a move in the story ever. But then, with Griffin out of the way, at number two, we have Enma, and in a little bit of a twist, I think, it's sibling blade, Ame no Habakiri. Now, I'm actually putting both of these together because they should essentially be on the same level, since they were both both used by the former samurai Odin. However, since we have the most experience with Enma, let's discuss this one in more detail. And we learn just how monstrous this sword is right after Zoro traded Shusui for it. And that's because by just holding the sword, Enma will suck the life force out of the user, which can literally kill you if you aren't even strong enough to use it. Which forces Zoro to use all of his hockey so that he can fully control the blade and use it to its full potential. Heck, it basically forced Zoro to learn advanced Conqueror's hockey during his final battle against Kaido's right-hand man King. Plus, Zoro used Enma and his other two swords as well to block one of the strongest attacks we've seen in the entire series. And while it is currently still ranked as a great, great sword, which is so stupid to say, we're told that if Zoro is able to turn Enma into a black blade, then it would probably be considered one of the supreme great swords. Which the same could probably be said of Amino Habakiri. Unfortunately, that sword is not being used by someone as strong as Zoro at the time, so it might just not be relevant in the story in the future. So now, let's reveal the single strongest blade in the entire story, and yes, no surprises here, it is of course the black blade of the strongest swordsman in the world. Yoru. So let's go through the massive list of feats that this blade has. It is the only blade in the entire series that has both a supreme grade rank and is a black blade. It is just insanely massive and can cut through giant ice mountains with ease. It also delivered the first real defeat of a straw hat in the entire story and showed us just how under level Luffy and Zoro were at that time. And it has been used in many legendary duels with the likes of Shanks throughout the years. Now, that is undoubtedly an impressive list of accomplishments, but 
wait. There is even more mystery surrounding this sword than you might think. Because one thing you may not have ever noticed are these strange markings on Yoru. Because these markings are actually shockingly similar to these markings that are on the empty throne in Marijua. I mean... What? When I first read about this, it completely blew my mind. I thought he might have worked for the Celestial Dragons, or maybe he just took Yoru from someone who did. But whatever the true answer is, there's obviously many more secrets this legendary sword might hold about the One Piece world, but as we get closer to the end of the story, many of secrets like this are being revealed, and one of the most important secrets is the truth about Devil Fruit. So if you want to find out which of the most overpowered Devil Fruits almost broke One Piece, you can watch that video right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.